united with Christ. Meet local churches with open doors serving throughout the Border Valley community and sharing the truth and hope of God's love and salvation. A presentation of Life Christian Broadcasting Television. And now, United with Christ. Hallelujah. Welcome to uh, United with Christ. I'm Pastor Tim Thompson. Uh, I pastor, uh, been called to pastor Mountain View Baptist Church in Northeast El Paso. And it's such a privilege to be here today. Uh, I had something completely different that I was going to, uh, to speak about. But um, that terrible tragedy happened yesterday. Uh, that shooting in Uvalde, Texas, is just heartbreaking. Heartbreaking. Uh, 19 uh, students killed, just children killed, and two adults, and many more wounded and hurt by an 18-year-old disturbed young man. And <clears throat> it's just absolutely heartbreaking. Another thing that I find very heartbreaking is as I get on social media, which I should know better, I should stay away from it, uh, but I, I get on Facebook and I see uh, people posting things like thoughts and prayers and they scratch it out. They say we need to change policy. Thoughts and prayers, you know, they get offended when, when people uh, offer their thoughts and their prayers to the folks in Uvalde uh, and, and the belittling the power of prayer. And it's, it shouldn't surprise Christians and people of God that, that the world sees prayer as something that is not effective, something that, that, that is not, the truth is, is that as Christians and believers, the most important, powerful thing in, in, in the arsenal against evil, the most important thing we have, the most powerful, potent thing we have is prayer to our holy God. But you know, sometimes we pray the wrong way. And in defense of, of the world's point of view, did I say that? In defense of the world's point of view, perhaps, I'm just offering this as, 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 a, as a perhaps, perhaps they see the manner in which we've been praying, the ineffectiveness of prayer. And the, to them, it's, and to the world, it's like, what, what is the point to prayer? What, what is the, th the point to having thoughts and prayers for the people in these situations when, 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 when we need action, we need action? Well, as believers, we should know this, that the most action thing that, that we can do, the most important thing we can do is pray. But we need to pray effectively. Why, why aren't our prayers effectively? Why don't we have victorious prayer? And that's what I want to look at. Because um, so if you would turn with me to James chapter 4. James chapter 4. If you don't have a Bible, maybe you have a, an app on your phone or whatever. Uh, do that, would you, right now while I'm speaking? James chapter 4. It's an important, it's an important um, few verses that I'd like to share with you. So much in the Bible about, about prayer in God's word. But uh, God laid this on my heart today. It says, um, so what, what, it says, from whence come wars and fightings among you? It's a question. From whence come fight, wars and fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lusts that war in your members? Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, yet ye have not. Because ye ask not. Think, I want you to circle that. So if it's not already circled or, high, or highlighted, I want you to, to remember that ye have not because ye ask not. Just underscore that phrase. Ye have not because ye ask not. I want us to think today on this subject. Victorious prayer. 
victorious prayer. If there's anything that I need to do, that you need to do, that we need to do, uh, it, everybody needs to do this, is to learn how to pray. Amen. Learn how to pray. The man who can pray can do anything. The woman who can pray can do anything. This is an important thing. Adrian Rogers said this, is to learn how to pray. The man who, who can pray uh, can do anything that God can do. Anything that God can do anything. And our desperate, and, and we have desperate need today in these days to, to link our lives with this omnipotent God. Amen? Amen. God who has called upon us and told us to pray. And Jesus said, ask and, she, and ye shall receive in John 16, 24. And James says, you have not because you ask not in this passage that we just read. So uh, you don't have a failure in your life, uh, but what is a prayer failure? Amen? You don't have a sin in your life, but what, what could have been prevented uh, by prayer? Amen? You don't have a genuine need in your life that would not be extinguished, that cannot be met through f the fervent prayer of a believer. And I believe that today. I believe that today. Oh, I hope you believe that. Uh, today that, that we need to learn how to pray. And there's no better place to start than right here in the book of James as we're going to be thinking on this subject of, of victory through prayer. Vic victory through prayer. And we're going to study under these headings. First of all, we're going to see the presumption of unoffered prayer. Then we're going to see the problem of unacceptable prayer. And then we're going to see the principles of undeniable prayer, how to pray so that our prayers cannot, will not, and shall not be denied in the name of Jesus. Amen. First of all, the presumption of unoffered prayer. I want you to see today that the presumption of unoffered prayer, the first two verses, it says, from whence come wars, fightings among you? Come they not hence even of your lusts and the war of your members? Ye lust and have not. Ye kill and desire to have and cannot obtain. Yet ye have not because ye ask not. I love that. Ye have not because you ask not. The presumption of unoffered prayer. We know we have to ask him. We have to ask. Amen. If you have something you need to ask this morning and you need help praying, we have a prayer line. It's right there, 915-532-8518. Uh, Call and somebody will pray with you uh, this morning. Praise God for this, for this television station. You have not because you ask not. The presumption of unoffered prayer. God wants to bless us. I'm going to say that again. God wants to bless us. He wants to give us what we need. But we're so presumptuous at times, aren't we? Yes, we are. I know I am. We're so proud. We're so self-sufficient uh, that we go about our, trying to do things in our own strength, fighting on our own, in our own strength, warring, scheming, planning, hating, killing, conniving, striving, trying in our own way to get the things that we think, that we think we need. You know what's wrong with our city right now? with our city, our city is not given over to prayer. We're not. We're not. There's no problem that cannot be solved by prayer. Uh, so so all, those, all those things you hear about, we don't need thoughts and prayers anymore. That's exactly what we need right now. We need prayer, but we need the prayer of the righteous. We need prayer of people who are true believers in God. And who know that there's nothing that if we ask in him according to his will, that he won't answer, that he won't give. There's no problems too big to solve. There's no problems too small to solve for God. Uh, I want to tell you, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that when we begin to pray, when we seek the face of God, we'll know peace. We will know peace domestically, 
in our hearts we'll, as we seek the face of Almighty God. God wants to bless us. Hallelujah. God wants to bless us, and he can bless you. He will bless us through prayer. More ships, some cry. More guns, more fighters in the air. But wise, the wise king, the wise leader, the wise man, the wise woman calls for prayer, for prayer. Pray, ask, and you shall receive, the Lord Jesus said. Jesus said that. You see, it's not, it's not until it's prayer, it's, actually, it's prayer that links our lives with the omnipotent power of God. Oh, what a strong thing. What, what a strong thing to have in, our, in our, our, our arsenal. A little boy one day in his play um, was playing, uh, was trying to move this huge stone and he was trying with all of his might to move this big, this, this big rock. And his little muscles were just bulging. And there was perspiration just dripping down his face. He was biting his tongue, just trying to move this big old rock. And his father was watching. And his father said to him, Son, are you using all of your strength? That was his question. Are you using all of your strength? And the little boy said, Yes. Yes, Daddy, I am. I'm, I'm, I'm using all my strength. And his dad said, no, you're not. You haven't asked me to help you. See, folks, we, sometimes we think we're just using all of our strength, to, praying in all of our strength, using everything we have. And we're not asking our Father for help. We need his strength to move whatever it is that we need. Sometimes we're burdened down problems we strive we cry we fight and, and we and we go to war we wrangle and we're saying i'm doing everything i know how to do but if you ask god for help have you asked our heavenly father for help have you linked your life with him could it be that god wants to bless you mm. and the reason that god's not blessing you could be so simple just so simple. You have not because you ask not. When I was down in Florida going to Bible school, uh, I was working for my uncle uh, as, as his youth pastor at his, at, uh, at his church. And uh, we had a couple of orange trees on the property. And these orange trees, were they were just kind of growing wild because if you've ever been to Florida, central Florida, you know orange trees just grow everywhere. Well, they... No one really tended these oranges, and these oranges were sour. But I had people that was always giving me, uh, members of the church, giving me oranges because everybody had their own orange trees and, and grapefruit trees. And we had a surplus, my wife and I, of, of oranges. So many that, that just truthfully, they just went bad a lot of the times because you just, how many oranges can, one, can two people eat? There was this little kid outside. I was eating a sandwich. Uh, during my lunch break at church, and I noticed this kid, my, my uncle was with me, and we were looking at this kid acting like well, he was going to steal an orange off one of these trees in the, uh, in the churchyard. And we were watching him, and, and sure enough, he went and got him one, and he, he ran away. And my uncle said, you know, he's going to, he said, I'd just do anything in the world to to see that kid's face when he bites into that orange because those oranges are sour. They're not, they're not sweet. They're not really good to eat. But here's the deal. If that kid would have knocked on the door and just asked us for some good fruit, we'd have, I, we have a surplus of oranges that's just going bad that people bring to us. And uh, we would have gladly given that kid so, some good fruit. That's what our Heavenly Father wants. He wants to give us the good stuff, the good stuff. We, we go on our own. And we're like that little kid stealing that sour orange when God's got all the good stuff that we need. Amen? So it's easy to make the same application to that swiping the oranges here. Um, hallelujah. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pain we bear. All because we don't 
Carry everything to God in prayer. What a great song. The presumption of unoffered prayer. Did you know that prayerlessness is a sin? It's a sin. The Bible says, God forbid that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray uh, for you. 1 Samuel 12, 23. Did you know the Bible tells us that we're to pray all the time? All the time. The Bible says very clearly, uh, very clearly in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. On and on and on. Example after example. Uh, uh, time uh, is preventing me to, to go through all these scriptures. But I'm going to tell you that the Bible, God's word, is very clear. Paul Bunyan wrote in Pilgrim's Progress, prayer will make a man cease from sin. Prayer will make a man cease from sin. And sin will entice a man to cease from prayer. Good words. Good words. Um, are you praying? Are you praying this morning? I'm, I just want to ask you that. Most of us talk about prayer like we do the weather. Boy, the weatherman really missed it today, right, didn't he? I mean, the one I listened to, I'm not going to mention his name. He happens to be a friend of mine. Also, um, sometimes, sometimes he, he misses the mark uh, and, and because he's not God. He's, he's really predicting the weather. Even with all the modern technology, we're still predicting. God's in charge of the weather, isn't he? Amen. So we need to learn how to pray. We're asking God to lead us into a program that's so immense, so big, so unbelievable um, at, at church, at our churches. Uh, we all have programs, and we're asking God to, to bless these programs. And we're going to be able to raise money to build buildings or whatever. But it's only God who does it, God who provides. We have to, we have not because we don't ask. We don't ask, right? So uh, the presumption, arrogance of unoffered prayer, are we guilty of that sin? The problem of unacceptable prayer. The second thing James speaks about is not only the presumption of unoffered prayer, but he also speaks of the problem of unacceptable prayer, that we don't offer uh, our prayers um, to God and accept them because our prayers, why, why are our prayers unacceptable? Well, let's see what James says about it. You ask and receive not because you ask amiss. That is, you're asking wrongly that you may consume it, consume it upon your lust, ye adulterers and adulteresses. Know that ye not, know ye not that the friendship of the world is the enmity with God. And that word enmity means warfare with God. Whosoever therefore will be a friend of the world is an enemy of God. So when we ask, uh, we need to, the prayers get no higher than a ceiling or no higher than a light bulb because they're not asking for the glory of God. When we ask God for something, it should be for his glory according to his will. That's so important. That's a very important ingredient. Amen? To ask according to his will. That uh, Paul says, I am jealous of, uh, uh, over you with a godly jealousy for I have espoused you to Christ uh, as a chaste and pure virgin in 2 Corinthians 11. So we're, so we're to be jealous for the cause of Christ. Uh, and that's it's just a figure of speech. It's a metaphor that James is referring to here. But now that there's another suture who comes along, the other suture is the world. So are we ser serving the world or are we serving God? Are we asking are we asking uh, in lust, in world? Are we asking according to God's will, knowing that this is something God is, is attuned to? Uh, we need to make that commitment um, to, uh, as, like, we're the bride of Christ. If we're adulterous, if we're living in adultery, if we're cheating on him and living according to the world and not living uh, separate lives, uh, then we're asking, we're asking in the wrong way. Uh, the third principle is the principle of undeniable prayer. The third thing, most important thing, I want you to notice this, uh, that not only the problem of presumption uh, and, and unoffered prayer and the problem of unacceptable prayer 
is I'd like you to notice thirdly the principles of undeniable prayer. How can we pray that our prayers will not be denied? How can we pray to get through to God? Uh, James gives us five principles, and, and I'm going to go through them really quick. The first is the sensitivity to the Spirit. Principle number one, uh, look in verse five. Do you think the Scripture saith in vain, the Spirit that dwelleth in, in us lusteth to envy? Uh, James 4, 5. Now, who is the Spirit that dwells in us? The Holy Spirit. Amen? And the word lusteth means strong desires. Strong desires. It has no sexual connotation here. In the Greek, the language is whatever. The Holy Spirit within us has some very strong desires. The Holy Spirit within us has, is very envious. Now, let's see what, it, what he envies for. He envies for the cause of Christ. Amen? So we, we, we want to make sure that uh, uh, this, uh, the third, second principle is submission to the Father. Submission to the Father. Uh, we, we must be sensitive to the Spirit. We also, also must be, have submission to our Heavenly Father. Amen? So look at the beginning of verse 6, what James says. He giveth more grace. Wherever he saith, God resisteth the proud, but give the grace to the humble. We have to be humble and submit. Our third uh, principle here is standing against the devil. Let me give you the third principle. Not only sensitivity to the spirit, uh, submissiveness to the father, but standing against the devil. We have to stand against evil when we pray. Amen? Our fourth is separation from the world. Notice that the principle of sensitivity to the Spirit and all these other, we have to be separate to the world. God called us to be separate. Our fifth is seriousness. This is most important. And being sober in our purpose when we pray. It's not a game. It's not a now I lay me down to sleep. Um, it's we have to pray uh, fervently because our prayers, if they're not fervent, they're giddy, they're giddy little silly, half-hearted, easily uttered, soon forgotten. James says it's time that we prayed in keeping with urgency and, and that we need to learn to weep before the Lord. Amen? Hezekiah was about to die. He turned his face to God and prayed with urgency. Are we praying with that urgency today? We need to pray. Thoughts and prayers are important in these times. Amen? But pray with urgency. Pray according to God's will, and he will answer. Amen.